step into the wild world of the 1974 TV series where humans are at the mercy of apes. No need for fancy words here. It's a straightforward journey filled with funny, shocking, and sad moments. Wondering if you have a special memory tied to this classic. Or perhaps there's a lesser known fact that fascinates you. Stick around because we've got a bunch of those coming your way. Ever thought about the behind the scenes stories that make this series even more intriguing? Well, we have, and we're about to spill the beans. But before we dive in, let's hear from you. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this series? We're all ears and would love to read your stories and memories in the comments below. Ready for the roller coaster of facts and anecdotes? Let's get started and don't forget to share your tales with us. Because after all, who doesn't love a good trip down memory lane? A review of the 1974 TV series Planet of the Apes reveals a mixed sentiment among viewers. One viewer from Framingham, uh, Asa, found the series somewhat enjoyable but acknowledges its flaws. The viewer reflects on the show's nostalgic value, describing it as a potential bridge for those seeking nostalgia. However, they critique it as ill-conceived and dull, suggesting it may not hold up well beyond the lens of fond memories. Another viewer admits to having a guilty pleasure for the series at having loved it as a child, despite recognizing its shortcomings, such as a lackluster experience compared to films from that era, they find merit in the show's good stories and socially conscious storylines. The viewer points out logical inconsistencies, especially in the time frame, where the show is set in the year 3084 ad, whereas the original film takes place in 3D955 ad. This discrepancy in the timeline, along with issues of bad writing and a low production budget, may have contributed to the show's mid-season cancellation. Despite these critiques, the viewer acknowledges the commendable ape makeup, which, even with a cheap budget, manages to carry the show. They suspect that without the existing props and costumes from the films, the series might not have been greenlit in the first place. In essence, the series is seen as a mixed bag of both shortcomings and redeeming qualities. Back in 1974, a famous TV show brought together a bunch of really talented actors. One of them was Sandra Locke, who had some interesting connections to a former mayor named George Crook. People were pretty interested in her because of that. Another standout actor was Roddy McDowell, who played Cornelius and Caesar amazingly well. He was in a bunch of movies in the series, and people loved him as much as other big actors like Charlton Heston and Kim Hunter. Then there's Norman Alden, who showed his acting skills in a movie called The Sword in the Stone back in 1963. He joined the Planet of the Apes series too, which was cool because it connected different parts of his career. These actors made the show really good. People loved watching them because they made the story come alive. And even though the show's been around for a while, it's still super popular today. Beverly Garland, known for her roles in various TV shows and films, began her acting journey in little theater productions in Glendale, California during her teenage years. She also studied voice with Anita Arliss, sister of Oscar-winning actor George Arliss. Sandra Locke, another notable figure, underwent at least two facelifts along with blepharoplasty and other cosmetic surgeries during her career. Morgan Woodward, recognized for his acting prowess, attended the Western Film Fair in July 1996 in Charlotte, North Carolina, alongside several other esteemed guests including Tony Young, Patricia Blair, Gene Evans, and others. In 1974, a TV series emerged that reshuffled CBS's fall schedule, bumping Space 1999 to syndication a year later. William Smith, later inducted into the Venice Muscle Beach Bodybuilding Hall of Fame in 2010, was part of this series. Alan Verdon and Pete Burke, aboard their spaceship, stumbled upon a time warp near Alpha Centauri on August 19, 1980. It was a pivotal moment, setting the stage for their adventures. The blend of sci-fi and drama captured audiences, making it a memorable part of television history. In the making of the show, Kim Hunter was asked to be on the cast as a chimp, but she said no because she didn't like the makeup process. Even though she was tempted to join the famous group of actors, she hesitated probably because of the long hours spent putting on makeup. Sandra Locke, known for her role in the outlaw Josie Wales, was born in the same month and year as Patti LaBelle, Helmut Berger, and Meredith Macri, all within days of each other. It's a strange coincidence, a meeting of talent and destiny happening around the same time, each making their own way in the big world of entertainment. The fact that they were all born close together suggests that life is complicated, with fate weaving together in unexpected ways. It's like the universe planned for them to come together, each leaving a lasting memory in the era they lived in. And so, as the story of Planet of the Apes slides on through the years, it shows how skilled and dedicated the people were who made the story come to life. 
This includes many individuals whose paths crossed during its creation, influencing its history in various ways. The stories from behind the scenes are just as interesting as the movie itself, filled with interesting details that tell us about the human experience in the world of movies. That's why the Planet of the Apes tale keeps captivating people all over the world. Joanna Barnes faced social consequences in 1960 when she pursued acting. Woodrow Parfrey grew up poor during the Depression after losing his parents. William Smith shared motocross passion with Steve McQueen and appeared in CC and Company as a track rider. Each actor brought unique experiences to the show, enriching its narrative with their diverse backgrounds. The series, born from the iconic film, captivated audiences with its gripping portrayal of a world dominated by apes. It remains a timeless classic in television history. In the world of TV history, some important people were part of a series back in 1974. One of them was Roddy McDowell, a well-known actor who starred in several big movies like How Green Was My Valley and Cleopatra. Another person involved was Beverly Garland, who came from a mixed background. Her mom was a cosmetician with German roots, and her dad used to be a singer who traveled a lot for his gigs until he had to settle down for work. Sadly, he died in a car crash in 1961. Roddy McDowell wasn't just an actor, he was also a great dancer. He even won contests for Dancing the Charleston and Cha-Cha in 1950 on a show called The Arthur Murray Party. These quick facts give you a peek into the lives and talents of the people who made this TV series memorable. Following the passing of Roddy McDowell, Angela Lansbury paid tribute to him on BBC Radio 5 Five Up All Night, recalling him as one of the most wonderful friends anybody could possibly have. She expressed that he would be greatly missed. Norman Alden, survived by his son Brent and daughter Ashley from a previous marriage, along with two stepsons Randy and Kevin Theban, a stepdaughter Sherry Theban, and his partner Linda Theban, with whom he shared over 30 years in Los Angeles. He is also survived by a step-granddaughter. McDowell holds the distinction of playing villains on both Batman and Batman the Animated Series, a feat unmatched by any other actor. In other news, Sandra Locke's death certificate revealed she resided at the same address as Gordon Anderson. Efforts to contact Anderson for comment proved fruitless. Locke, who was the ex de facto daughter-in-law of Ruth Wood, received a poignant Christmas card from Wood in 1989, featuring a tearful Winnie the Pooh drawing with the message, I'm so sorry. This was in response to a Christmas card Locke had sent. Additionally, Roscoe Lee Brown earned the 1992 Drama Log Award for his performance in Two Trains Running at the James A. Doolittle Theater in Los Angeles. In 1974, a TV series titled Planet of the Apes aired, featuring a cast with notable backgrounds. Joanna Barnes, known for her role in the show, resided in the Sea Ranch development along the northern coast of California. Sandra Locke, another member of the cast, had previously owned a production company called Caritas Films, which is now defunct. John Ireland, who also appeared in the series, had notable roles in classic Western films such as Gunfight at the OK Corral and My Darling Clementine, portraying a member of the Clanton Gang in both movies. These diverse backgrounds contributed to the dynamic ensemble of the series, adding depth to the characters and their interactions. Despite its short run, the show left a lasting impact on television history, remembered fondly by fans for its unique premise and compelling storytelling. In 1965, Roddy McDowell graced the Los Angeles premiere of The Sound of Music as the date of its star, Julie Andrews. Later, in 1960, McDowell earned his place on the Hollywood Walk of Fame at 1632 Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood, California. John Ireland, recognized as one of Hollywood's genuine nice guys, consistently engaged with fans, willingly signing autographs and posing for photographs. These snippets unveiled the personal sides of McDowell and Ireland, shedding light on McDowell's early Hollywood recognition and Ireland's amicable demeanor in the entertainment industry. In the 1970s, the standard practice for TV series involved a preceding TV movie pilot. However, CBS opted to skip this step for the series, choosing to jump straight into the narrative without the customary pilot. This deviation from the norm was a notable aspect of the show's production. Roddy McDowell, a potential cast member, faced a different turn of events in the 90s. Although considered for the role of manservant Niles on The Nanny, Fran Drescher ultimately decided against casting him due to concerns that his fame would overshadow the show's identity. The role went to a relatively lesser known actor, Daniel Davis. Another figure associated with the series is Jay Robinson. Betty Davis, in an introduction to his autobiography, praised Robinson's resilience during challenging years. 
She acknowledged his talent and credited his comeback to a newfound connection with God as portrayed in the book, The Comeback. The actress commended Robinson and his wife, Paulin, for their journey and perseverance. These behind the scenes glimpses offer insights into the unconventional decisions made during the show's production and shed light on the experiences of potential cast members like Roddy McDowell and Jay Robinson. Considered at one point was a plan to return to the original movie timeline, bringing back characters Cornelius and Zira. However, this idea never materialized. In a legal battle, Sandra Locke sued Warner Brothers for millions, alleging coercion into dropping a lawsuit against Clint Eastwood. Despite initial setbacks, the case was reinstated, leading to a settlement reached just before trial. Eastwood was set to testify as a material witness had the case proceeded to trial. Sandra Locke also made an appearance under the pseudonym Miss Smith in a popular self-help book published in 1982. Beverly Garland, born on the same day as Julie Adams, both appeared on an episode of Mannix. John Hoyt, once known as John Hoistrat, showcased his talent at the Rainbow Room in Rockefeller Center in 1937 as the master of satire. Woodrow Parfrey, alongside Roddy McDowell, Norman Burton, and Eldon Burke, is one of the four actors who appeared in both the 1968 film and the 1974 series. Each of these actors brought their own unique flair to their roles, contributing to the rich tapestry of the series. In an interesting turn of events, Sandra Locke found herself as the subject of a narrative film titled Our Very Own, which followed the story of five teenagers in Shelbyville 10, hoping to meet her upon her return for the local premiere of Every Which Way But Loose. Interestingly, the 24-foot plywood spaceship from the first movie made its final appearance in the pilot episode. Additionally, John Ireland, older half-brother of Tommy Noonan, shared screen time with him in I Shot Jesse James. Noonan also had connections with Ireland's former brother-in-law, Peter Marshall. Quite the web of connections, indeed. In the world of entertainment, there are actors who leave a mark with their versatile roles. Take Roddy McDowell, for example. He appeared in both the 1966 Batman series and the 1992 Batman the Animated Series, showcasing his talent across different eras. Jacqueline Scott is another notable figure. She took part in the 26 Twilight Zone convention, held at the Hilton Hasbrock Heights in August 26, connecting with fans and sharing her experiences. Then there's William Smith, honored as an honorary member of the Stuntman's Association of Motion Pictures, recognizing his contributions to action-packed scenes and movies. These actors bring their unique experiences to the entertainment world, enriching it with their diverse talents and backgrounds. Mark Singer, who appeared in the series, is known to be the cousin of director Brian Singer. Morgan Woodward, another actor in the series, received a Golden Lariat Award at the National Western Film Festival in 1988. Roscoe Lee Brown, who played Frederick Douglass in both the TV movie Swing Out, Sweet Land, and on an episode of the series Meeting of Minds, was also part of the cast. These actors brought their own unique talents to the show, adding depth to the characters they portrayed. In the world of showbiz, there are moments that shape careers and define legacies. One such instance involved a renowned actor and a celebrated personality. Despite vying for the role of a creepy character in a horror series, the actor lost out to another, whose performance left an indelible mark. Meanwhile, the personality made a bold move by appearing in a popular magazine aiming to change public perception. Yet, this decision brought its own share of challenges, including unwanted attention and self-doubt. As the actor's portrayal became iconic, cementing his status in horror lore, the personality grappled with newfound fame and its pitfalls. Their journeys, recounted in memoirs, reveal the struggles behind the glamour. These stories resonate with audiences, underscoring the complexities of fame and the importance of staying true to oneself. Ultimately, both narratives serve as reminders of the power of honesty and self-awareness in navigating the spotlight. John Ireland, known for his role in the 1974 TV series, faced personal turmoil as his marriage to Joanne Drew ended due to his affair with Joan Crawford, his co-star in Queen Bee. This off-screen drama added its own layer of complexity to his life during the period. The show encountered challenges in the United States, with a significant factor being its late-night time slot. This scheduling decision contributed to its struggle to gain traction among viewers, ultimately impacting its success in the American market. Another actor in the series, John Hoyt, had a notable career outside of the show. In the 1960s, he served as the television spokesperson for a series of Midas muffler commercials. This role showcased a different facet of his talent, illustrating the diverse paths actors often take in their careers. These behind-the-scenes aspects shed light on the interpersonal dynamics 
and external factors that influenced the trajectory of the 1974 TV series. The show's challenges in both the personal lives of its cast members and its scheduling decisions in the United States added layers of complexity to its narrative. <laughs>